Ever since my butt kicker review, lots of people have been asking me how to set it up. Today, I'm going to do a quick SART guide and show you exactly how you can set it up without relying on your existing game audio. You may not even need an extra sound card because you might already have it built into your computer. If you're setting a butt kicker up for the first time, or if you're currently already using it but using the game audio, this setup is absolutely going to blow your mind. The first thing you're going to want to do is download SimHub from SimHubDash.com. SimHub is the real brain behind what I'm about to show you in this startup guide. In a nutshell, your butt kicker works off audio, but it doesn't necessarily need to work off your game audio. What SimHub does is it takes information from the game, information like gear changes, stuff like that, that you don't necessarily hear, but it changes into an audio frequency so that your butt kicker can react to that and only that. That's why people talk about the need for a dedicated sound card, but there might be good news for you because you may not even need one. If you already have a front audio port on your PC case that you're not using, you can plug the butt kicker into that, and that already has its own sound driver built in. Once you've downloaded SimHub, it's going to look something like this, and it's going to detect a load of different games, not necessarily ones that you have. They're all going to be written here, and you don't need to worry about any of that. Where you want to go is you want to go down to Shake It Bass Shakers, and in here is where you can set up the exact things that are going to be sent to the butt kicker. Before you do any of that, though, you're going to have a little button there saying First Time Configuration. I'm going to go to Sound Output, and I'm going to show you how I have this set up. In here, you'll have all of your audio sources. Mine happens to be headphones for the front port. This may have a different name, but it's very easy to figure out which one actually works for you. In their own right, each one of these can be seen as a sound card. If you do have one called headphones, expand it. Yours may not be called headphones, so don't worry about it. You can diagnose these very, very easily. I have mine set to stereo. Mono should do the same trick, but I've read that stereo is better. I don't know, I haven't tested it out. It doesn't make much of a difference. All you simply have to do is click the little test now button and you should feel vibration if you're connected up to the right sound source. If you don't feel a vibration, please check that your butt kicker is actually switched on and go to a different device. If none of those works for you, then you might need to buy a USB sound card, but luckily they're not expensive at all and they don't need to be amazing quality. I own one of these, and I actually own one of these as well, and they both do the job perfectly well. Luckily, your butt kicker isn't relying on massive audio quality, it just wants basic signals to know when to vibrate and when to just stay quiet. Again, SimHub just allows you to separate what the game tells you from what the audio is telling you. When you're racing, there are all sorts of noises going on like tire squeal, wind noise, all that kind of stuff that you don't necessarily want through your butt kicker. This allows you to separate all of the things that you do care about from the things that you don't care about. For example, when I got my butt kicker first, it was with the sole purpose of knowing when the rear was braking traction. I couldn't feel it through my Logitech steering wheel, so the butt kicker gave me that seat of my pants involvement that I needed to know when my car was going to break loose. It actually ended up making me a far more consistent driver, even though, on the face of it, it seems like a bit of a gimmick. One of the key things to remember with the butt kicker is that it's about quality, not quantity. You don't want to turn it up to the last, at least not at the very start. All you want is that clarity, that little bit of feedback to let you know that something's happening. Here are my settings. I have it running at 93%. I'm not exactly sure why, but it works for me, so I'm not changing it. Gear shift, I have it at 77. Wheel lock, I have it at around 68. Wheel slip, at 70% and they are all the things that I've set up. You've got deceleration, g-force, road vibration, all things that can be very useful in their own right but I just want some of the basic things because I know when the butt kicker is doing something one of those is happening. The gear shift alone makes the butt kicker worth the money. I know that sounds stupid as well but it is absolutely class and it really eliminates any misshifts that you might have in your car. And that's really all there is to it. That's a quick setup guide for the butt kicker. If you have any questions, give a shout below. If you like this, hit like. Um, if you want to subscribe to the channel, please do. There'll be plenty more content like this in the future. Thanks for watching. I will chat to you all later.